Welcome to your Hope-Filled Perspective with Dr. Michelle Bankson. I am delighted that you have chosen to spend a few minutes of your week with us. Recently, close to Mother's Day, we aired an episode about overcoming mother wounds. We received very positive feedback about that episode, and we felt that as we neared Father's Day, knowing what a painful day that can be for so many, that we should also have an episode about the impact of father wounds. If you have ever felt wounded by your earthly father, or felt that your relationship with your earthly father has potentially negatively impacted your relationship with your heavenly father, then today is the perfect episode for you. Scripture tells us in Psalm 68, 5, Father to the fatherless, defender of the widows, that is God whose dwelling is holy. And 1 John 3, 1 says, See how very much our Father loves us, for he calls us his children, and that is what we are. But the people who belong to this world don't recognize that we are God's children because they don't know him. So very often, our relationship with God as our Heavenly Father is colored by the relationship that we had with our earthly father. So today, we're going to be talking about father wounds and fatherlessness. On today's show, we're going to be talking to my friend, Lisa Burkhart Worley. Lisa's the founder of Pearls of Promise Ministries, a ministry that helps women overcome past and current dysfunction. Just as a pearl is formed after years of irritation and distress in the oyster shell, God can take our life trials and make something beautiful as well. Lisa is an author of several books, including her most recent book, To Help the Fatherlessness, The Only Father I Ever Knew, How a Fatherless Child Finally Found True Love. She also has recently released a six-week Bible study, Knowing the Father. Welcome to your hope-filled perspective, Lisa. I'm so glad you're here. Thank you so much, Dr. Bengston. I think I have to be formal on this now, but uh, I know you as Michelle personally because we're friends, but uh, you know, I want to give credit where credit is due, but thank you so much for having me on the show. Lisa, as we probably have many listeners who have tuned in who aren't even sure what it means when we refer to as father wounds. Can you help define that for us? Sure, a father wound can be about a father who perhaps dies prematurely uh, before you're born. Doesn't have to be a father who has been difficult or who has wounded you with words. It's not always that. I say that I have a father wound because my father died two months before I was born. But it could be a father wound because your father had abandoned the family. There, there that happens so much, mm -hmm. uh, Doctor Bengston, um, because uh, of divorce situations, and then the father goes on and it doesn't really have much to do with his family and then he remarries he has a second family and I hear this all the time that the, that the child from the previous marriage is forgotten so it could be a father wound like that or it could be a father wound because a father has been abusive uh, we have somebody actually on our street team who was sexually abused by her stepfather you know and she thought he was going to step in as a dad to her and yet he he violated her in that way so in fact I know of stories where a actual blood relative father has sexually abused a child their daughter and so this happens as well but it could be a, just a, a father wound from a, a father who's gruff who's physically abusive or perhaps they've been physically abusive to the the other parent, the mother, um, these can all cause wounds. Wounds are very all-encompassing. And so these are things that we have to heal from um, after our childhood. How did you experience the after effects then of the father wounds because of an absentee father? Be not absentee, but because he died before you were born. Right. And just to give a little recap, my father was a physician and he was a polo player uh, as a pastime. He, he used to play polo uh, on the weekends, competitive polo. And one day, as everyone was watching, he dropped dead of a, a massive heart attack uh, right there in the polo fields, didn't make it to the hospital. My mother was seven months along. I was born basically two months later. She never recovered from that. That's a whole nother story and a whole nother show. Uh, but uh, but she, she really uh, struggled the rest of her life, ended up in a group home. And so for me, being born into a fatherless world, it, it, you don't really... 
uh, for a while, you don't really understand the difference. I mean, you just know that you have a mom who's really struggling and I'd live off and on with my grandparents and my grandfather would step in a little bit. And I had a couple of uncles who would step in. But for me, when I was, um, when I was in school, you know, when I, it was just my mother and myself, when we were living on our own, um, there is a loneliness that comes with the not having a dad. Um, th th you want, you want someone to help you with life and to help you determine which direction or path to take. I, I changed my major three times in college. You know, I wish I would have had a dad who could have um, just helped me look at my strengths. Plus a father um, is, is the one who builds your self-esteem. He's the one who speaks um, the positive things into your life and that you're beautiful or that um, that he loves you or that uh, you know, he, he he tells you how talented you are gifted and so when you don't have that you grow up with very low self-esteem and mm -hmm. and I had a lot of insecurity and I think many uh, girls who don't have a father in their lives um, are insecure but if you want me to go on, one of the things that fatherless girls do, um, which is just typical, is they're searching for the love of a father. Mm. And you probably know this being in your field, <laughs> um, that girls will go, and I did it myself. You're just looking for someone who will affirm you, who will love you, and you don't really know how, how to do that. And so, uh, so you are seeking that usually from boys. And uh, fatherless girls, the statistics are very bad for getting pregnant and for sexual promiscuity because you, you, you think that that is how uh, um, someone should show love to you. And you don't realize it's really not right and, and uh, it doesn't really lead to a, a healthy place. And so that's what I did. I actually um, did get pregnant in college and had an abortion, which I totally uh, regret now. Um, and realize now how bad that was. But at the time it was like, oh, I've got, I've got to do something. You know, I have to make it, yeah. you know, I have to get this degree and I have to go on. I have to be successful because it's just me doing this. And so, um, so I think that's what, um, uh, I could go on about this, but I think that is what girls do. They're, they're seeking for love and sometimes they do it in the wrong ways and, um, get into trouble. And just to be clear, you don't have to be fatherless to experience father wounds, correct? Right. No, you don't have to. No, um, your father could be right there in the family uh, and, and you could still have father wounds. Uh, maybe they're harsh and they, they say they don't affirm you and they say negative things. I've heard of fathers telling their daughters they're ugly or that they don't love them. You know, you hear about stuff all sorts of things like that. And so you can have a father wound from that. Perhaps a father had an affair, you know, while he was married to uh, uh, your mother and there's a lot of secretiveness and that can create a father wound. So um, that's, that's why for many people, it's um, hard to think of God as father if you've been damaged by your own father or maybe your father was distant. I've heard about uh, a lot of dads who don't say much in the home and they kind of go off into their office and they don't communicate with their children and be seen and not heard. And, you know, they're just work, 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 busy, 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 late hours, and they hardly spend any time with their daughters or their sons. And so that can a create a father wound. What's that? Or they travel a lot. Or they, tra yeah, they tra they're not home. They trap mm -hmm. nowadays. That's very predominant. A lot of dads travel and they're gone all the time. And we're talking about your experience today, but father wounds can occur to both men and women. Oh, absolutely. And I think if you go into the prisons, <laughs> you will find that a lot of those who are in prisons will will have a father wound. Or, um, uh, so because and so they act out in a different way. Men will uh, perhaps sometimes get violent, or they'll do things uh, that they, you know, will regret later. But maybe get angry, and so they don't know where to take that anger, and so sometimes it goes into the wrong path. And so uh, I believe the father is so important to a child's well-being. Yes, yes. I was recently asked after a school shooting why I thought we were seeing these incidents. And I'm going to go out on a limb and say, it's because they didn't know the love of a father. Because right. if they really did, they wouldn't be acting out in such a violent, aggressive 
way, whether it's their biological father or a stepfather, but I'm going to go so far as to say they don't know the love of our heavenly father. That's right. Um, you know, if I did not know the love of our heavenly father, I don't know where I'd be today. I'm just not sure. Right. I don't know if I'd be alive. Uh, I'm just so thankful that a friend of mine just reached out to me in high school in my freshman English class. We had five minutes left to go. The teacher was done. She turned around and she asked me if I wanted to pray a prayer to receive Jesus Christ as my Lord and Savior. Five minutes left to go. She was so bold. Wow. But I will never forget that day. And that family took me to church and I was introduced at that point to God the Father. See, our Father will pursue us. And sometimes we say yes. And sometimes we run the other direction, but he was pursuing me. And I know that for a fact through my friend and he wanted me because he knew he has a heart for the fatherless. He doesn't want you to feel alone. He doesn't. And so we just have to be open to, to him stepping into that role. Yes. Oh, what a great friend <laughs> who would be so bold to share that with you. Oh, I, I, to this day, and I think she gets kind of tired of me say, introducing her as the girl that led me to Christ. <laughs> Every time we're together, oh, this is Leslie. She's the one that led me to Christ, but I'm so thankful and so grateful to this day. And I don't want to say how old I am, but it's been a long time since she did that. But I'm so thankful because it changed everything. Now, I did fall away for a while, but the father drew me back in my 30s. And it's still, uh, because of her, I knew where to go. I know I knew where to go back to. And she made a kingdom impact in those five minutes. She did. She was very bold and um, not too many high schoolers are that bold. No. You know, people are afraid. If they're afraid you're going to, they're going to lose you as a friend. I mean, I remember uh, sharing my faith with somebody and introducing them to the father and they thought I was crazy and, and she broke off the friendship. So you do take a risk when you share that. Friends, we're going to take a real quick one minute break for a commercial, but I want you to stick around to hear Lisa share more on the topic of fatherlessness and father wounds. Welcome back to your Hope Build Perspective, where today we're talking with Lisa Burkhart Worley on the topic of fatherlessness and father wounds. Lisa, what led to your desire to help men and women develop an intimate relationship with God as father? Well, I know where I came from and um, it is my hope uh, with the comfort that I've received from God the Father to help others understand that comfort. Because I know, as I said, I don't know where I'd be if I didn't have it. And, and it is such an incredible relationship. Uh, you feel when you spend your time with the God, the Father, I, I can tell him anything. I will sit there uh, and uh, just get on my knees and, and just cry my heart out sometimes. But this is the daddy that I had always longed for. I, um, you know, you want that when you're growing up, you want that daddy that you can sit on their lap and you can tell them everything. Well, I never had that. But this dad, I can do it as well. I mean, I can sit there and tell him everything. There is nothing hidden in God's sight, the word says. Right. And so I'm thinking, well, he knows everything anyway, so I might as well just blurt it all out. And so, and then he speaks to me so much. You know, that's why I, I really, when I say he speaks to me, he's, uh, he, it's, it's an impression I receive when I'm reading his word, or, or I feel an impression on my spirit. Um, and sometimes it's just very clear because it comes from a different angle. You know, it's like, I never, I didn't, it wasn't my thought. I know it wasn't my thought. And so I just want everyone to know that I don't want to hold this on to myself. I want other people to know that the people who are just struggling with um, this wound that they've received. I, I remember uh, I was speaking at a conference and a woman came up to me who was that had been at the conference the year before when I spoke the same conference and, and, and she just began to weep um, because mm -hmm. her father sexually molested her and he went to prison for it. And then he got out of prison and she thought he was rehabilitated and he did it again. And she, here she was about 60 years old, still, struggling with this wound and just weeping on my shoulder and and god 
wants to heal that wound. He wants to get into those, those deep, dark places in our soul and in our heart where we've been so hurt um, by our fathers. And he, he just wants to fill that void. So here's one of the things I want to say is we cannot equate God the Father um, Dr. Bengston, we cannot equate him to our earthly fathers. We just can't do that. I remember one time, it was like the, the flip side of this. I was in a Bible study, and I was talking about being fatherless and, and talking about how God was my father. And she goes, you know, I've just never been able to to do that or think of God as father because my daddy was great. I loved my dad and I just, I don't want another father. And so she didn't think of God as father. So that's an opposite way. Yeah. But for me, uh, I want people who don't, you know, who've had those wounds to know God as father, but you can't, if your father was, see for many years, my father, my God, the father was, was distant. Um, I thought of him as sitting up in a, you know, lofty throne up in heaven. And he didn't want anything to do with me. I was just a little subject down on earth. And, uh, and you know, I would say these and thous. And, and I was very formal with him until I realized he was my Abba daddy. You know, he, he wanted to have that kind of daughter relationship that I had longed for all of my life. I didn't have this after I first became a Christian. It wasn't until I rededicated my life in my 30s when I began to read the word and I began to see everything that God says about being our father that I realized this is more than this image that I had mm -hmm. of him. This is, he wants an intimate relationship with us. He, and we, so we can't equate him to our earthly fathers. You know, sometimes if our earthly father was uh, abusive, say, we think of God as a harsh God. Right. If our earthly father was distant, you know, he didn't talk to us that much and he wasn't there a lot of the times. We think of, of, of God as a distant God, but we have to stop that. What we have to do is read the word of God. We have to read our Bibles and we have to look at what it says about mm -hmm. God the Father. Yeah. You know, he, he thinks of us as his children. He wants to spend, wants us to spend time with us. Um, you think of the, the parable of the prodigal son in the Bible. And, I, and this is the one that comes to mind right now. So this is obviously for somebody who's listening, but you know, God, the, the, the son um, wanted all of his inheritance up front and he, he, he took off and he spent it all doing stuff they shouldn't have been doing. And he ended up losing all his money and losing his home and everything and end up in the pigsty, right? He was, you know, feeding the pigs and they're living with the pigs. He thought, well, you know, being a servant in my dad's house has got to be better than this. So he, he went home. And where was God or where was the father? Because it's a parable about God. Right. Where was the father? Was he angry? Was he just off doing his own thing and not looking for this child? No, he was waiting at the end of the road for this child to come back. And, and I do believe ran to him. What's that? He ran to him. He ran to him. Yes. When he saw him, he ran to him. And that is God, the father. You know, when we, when we walk away from him in our relationship, yeah, he is right. He's like, he's a pursuer. Uh, this Bible study I wrote, the first chapter is pursuer the first week, because I believe he's just walking. He's just waiting for us to turn around. He's pursuing us. He pursues us through other people. He pursues us through his word. He pursues us through a movie. He uses whatever it is to right. draw us back to him because he so desires a relationship with us. So I don't want anyone who's listening to think, you know, God, don't take, take God out of that box that you've put him in and, and begin to look at what the word says. Do a word search, what the word says about God, the father. He is not, um, we can't equate them, uh, equate him to our earthly fathers. Even if our earthly father was nice and wonderful and good, we still can't do it right? because God is far beyond. Yes. I, uh, I wrote a paper in school. I, I, I spent some time in seminary and I wrote a paper and it, it, I talked about God that is beyond our comprehension. So his father-like characteristics are beyond anything that we can imagine. He has such a deep love for us. In fact, Ephesians 3 says um, his love is so great that it takes his God's power to understand how great his love is for us. We cannot fathom that. We cannot understand it with our finite thinking. God's love is that great. You're right. I can hear a listener, though, asking the question, 
where was God then? Why didn't he prevent my earthly father from leaving or from abusing me or from abandoning me or from rejecting me? So how would you answer that listener? Well, first of all, as far as the abuse and the rejection, God out of his love for us gave mankind free will. And so people make mistakes. In fact, Jesus on the cross said, Father, forgive them, the ones that killed him, the ones that put him on the cross. Father, forgive them for they don't know what they're doing. Right. And that's the way it is with these earthly fathers that wrong us. Um, sometimes we have to look to see beyond them, to see what their childhood was like. Exactly. Wounded people wound people. So they may have been abused by their father and they may only be acting out what they know, or perhaps they were not loved by their father. You know, uh, I remember um, the, the well-known author, Leif Strobel, telling his father's story and, and how he never heard his father tell him he loved him. And so he started acting out and doing all these things. He became an atheist because, you know, because of that earthly relationship. Right. And, and later he found out his dad was bragging about him to all his friends. He goes, why didn't he tell me that? Why did he? But he did find out on his own who the heavenly father was. And he could not equate um, those two. So we, we just have to understand that mankind's given free will and they do this. And let me tell you something about my father that died. Here's the thing, what I realized later, and it took a long time to get to this point. I realized that in a way I was glad my dad died. I know that sounds a little bit crazy and a little far-fetched. As much as I would have loved to have had a relationship with him, people were so kind. They would write me letters. They knew him as a doctor in San Antonio, Texas, and they used to write me their memories uh, of him. They would send me letters. It was just beautiful. One man wrote every, who did some research with him, he wrote every memory, good and bad, that he could think of about my dad, just to give me a character sketch. That was so beautiful. What a gift. Yeah, it was a, a great gift. But I later thought, you know, I'm, I'm kind of glad he, he died. And I, because if he hadn't of, I would have been this little rich girl, you know, and I would have, um, I, I probably might've been real spoiled rotten and I wouldn't have necessarily needed God. You know, I would have not necessarily sought God. My dad was Jewish. So I would have had, um, you know, kind of, uh, my mother was Christian, but you know, I would have had kind of a mixed upbringing and on what I've seen from that, there's a lot of confusion, you know, with, uh, you know, what, what to believe. Do you believe in Jesus? Do you not believe? So you end up not believing anything really, you know? So, um, so I, um, um, I, I was glad in a way because I don't think I would have sought God as father in the way that I did. And, and because I did, he had a plan for my life. Yeah. You know, he formed me in the womb and he's used all of this stuff, my father wounds, my mother wounds, and he's molded me into a, a woman who does ministry now. I had a career for many years in secular, in the secular world in television, but but later on, he just trained me to do what I'm doing now. And he's used, used this um, experience to help others with this kind of wound. See, I, he's healed me yeah. so I can help others heal. And, that and is that's my whole heart. Example of Romans 8.28, where God truly does work all things together for our good, even the loss of your father. He worked that for good. Friends, we're going to take a real quick one minute commercial break, but please stick around because we have more to talk to Lisa about on the topic of fatherlessness and father wounds. Welcome back to your hope filled perspective. Lisa, your book is called The Only Father I Ever Knew, How a Fatherless Child Finally Found True Love. Can you help us have a picture of what that was like for you going from being a fatherless child to learning to embrace the love of a heavenly father who you can't see, you just have to believe is there? Well, I had an experience that happened to me that really made me understand how much I love God. Uh, my, my uncle decided to take all of the old eight millimeter film and he converted it to VHS. That shows how old I am <laughs> because we don't even have VHS anymore. But he gathered all of the family together in my aunt's living room and he played all these old home movies of when we were kids. 
But what he didn't tell me is that there was a clip on there of my dad and my mother's wedding reception. So this, this VHS tape plays, I am, I am catatonic. And the reason why is because I'd never seen my dad moving. I'd never seen my father moving. He died before I was born. So this is the first time I saw him moving. Uh, and, he, and I was just watching every, every little move that he made. And he was kind of nervous. And so I thought, oh, that's where I get it. You know, and he was taking, you know, here at his own wedding reception, he was taking photos of everybody. He was busy, you know, busy guy. And so I thought, okay, you know, there's some genes here, you know, <laughs> that I've received from him. But afterwards, I thought I loved him so much more seeing him move and so but I didn't but he's not here right but I realized you know even though I don't see God I, I still love him kind of just like I loved my earthly father even though I never met him I never touched him physically or never saw him because God shows himself to me in so many different ways and I'm so thankful for that, you know, uh, just speaking little words of encouragement or sending someone who encourages me, who felt like God told him to tell me something or mm -hmm. to prophesy over me or whatever it is, you know, mm -hmm. I mean, God is so faithful when I need it to in encourage me. And, and it, it doesn't just happen every once in a while. It happens a lot because I am, I am, in, you know, I'm connected to him, you know, um, I, I want to segue, if I can, to a little story about um, something that may help someone who's listening. And I realized that I actually had to forgive my dad um, for dying. I, I, I never had thought about that. I, I went through something called a father ladder. It's an exercise that helps you forgive and overcome some of these wounds. And mm -hmm. And, and they actually took me through with my mother first and I had forgiven my mom. I went back and forgave her for a lot of the years of neglect. And, but, um, then they get to this question, do you forgive your dad for dying? And I'd never thought about that. You know, my dad couldn't help it that he died. It, you know, it, it, he wouldn't have chosen that. So why would I need to forgive him? But it unearthed something very deep in my soul. Mm -hmm. And I just began to sob. And I realized I had held a, held a grudge against my dad for dying because if my dad hadn't died, my life would have been so much better. My mother probably wouldn't have fallen apart and we would have had things. We had nothing, you know, as I was growing up, I had, you know, no clothes. The food was scarce, you know, all these things. I lived very poorly in a very wealthy environment, wealthy area. And, and I thought if he had lived, it would have been so different. So that day I, I, I verbally forgave my father for, for dying. I, and, and I was freed. I was so freed. And that really opened up the whole new world of having God as father. Yeah. Yes. That is an area where I can relate to you because my father died when I was a young child. And I remember eventually getting to that point where I realized I had to forgive him. Just like your father, it was not his fault. He died of a massive heart attack. Doctors had said just the week before, you're going to live to your 90. Oh. He died at 42. But I missed something. And it hurt that he was gone. So I had to forgive him for that hurt. That was not his fault. But Satan can use those experiences to inbred lies in our mind. That's right. But by forgiving, it does release that weight. And then it creates an open space in our heart to right. receive our Heavenly Father's love. Yes, that is exactly it. And that's what happened to me. That was probably a turning point for me with, with, with accepting God as my father and letting him fill that void. It's like he flooded that void in my heart, that big hole, that gaping hole that I didn't even know was there at that moment. And that's when I was really pressing in. Like you said, I had this opening for him. Yes. And so I really pressed into him as my Abba daddy. And I just can't tell people enough how important it is to have that relationship. He, 
it doesn't matter how old we are. You know, if you just now starting, say you're in your your fifties or sixties or seventies or whatever, and, and you've never really pressed into God as father, uh, it's not too late. No. Um, I, I, we, we can, he, he doesn't have any grandchildren. You know, he, he, he wants you to be his child and it's all through the Bible. I mean, every, there's so many verses. I know you read some, uh, Michelle, but another one that I'm so, I just love so much is, but to all who receive him, who believe in his name, he gives the right to become children of God. Yeah. Anyone, yeah. it's carte blanche, a blank check. He invites everyone to be his child. You just have to receive him. He absolutely does. And what a gift to us. If a listener is struggling with fatherlessness or father wounds from their childhood, Lisa, what hope-filled perspective would you want to offer to them today? Well, that God loves you. He loves you with a love that's never failing. Um, he will, uh, the, the word promises, he will never leave you nor forsake you. This world that we live in is finite. And we do have to make a decision to either follow God or not, to accept his son, Jesus Christ, or not. Because here's the promise, when we do accept his son who made a sacrifice so that we could, um, could have a, a pathway to God because he's a holy God and he can't let all these things that we've done stand in the way of our relationship. He, he had to have a sacrifice. And so, so if we accept his son as that sacrifice, then eventually we have a promise. We're going to dwell in eternity with God the Father. We're going to be gathered around him like a flock of children and, and he's going to he's going to love on us forever. Now that's a promise. Can you imagine being loved on by God, your father forever for eternity? I can't even, I can't even fathom that. It's going to be so exciting and so wonderful. And with a perfect love. And a perfect love. Yes. That casts out fear, right? That's in the Bible. He, you're not going to be a, you know, even though he's an awesome God, I don't think we're going to feel fear. I think we're going to feel his love overflowing toward us because it talks so much about love. And in fact, the scripture says God is love. Right. And so I think that is the comfort. This is just, um, just a, a, just a, a, a preview. You know, what we have here on this earth is just a preview of what is to come. So he wants to develop that relationship with us now so that when we walk into eternity, right, it's, it's going to be like just a natural progression. You know, he's going to, he's going to give us a big hug and welcome us in, into his home and, you know, been waiting for you just like that father for the prodigal son. Right. In, in fact, he might start running toward us. Right. Lisa, thank you for sharing your story to give hope to others who are in a situation, either of fatherlessness or having father wounds and penning your story in your book. Yes. Friends, I want to leave you with this last scripture. It's Psalm 146, verses 3 through 5, and it says, Don't put your confidence in powerful people. There's no help for you there. When they breathe their last, they return to the earth, and all their plans die with them. But joyful are those who have the God of Israel as their helper, whose hope is in the Lord their God. And I pray that today, in today's program, you found a new perspective on God the Father and how we can have hope, even if we have suffered through fatherlessness and father wounds. Until next time, this is Dr. Michelle Bankson with your hope-filled perspective. May you make it a hope-filled week. <music>